Hello, Irish fans, and welcome to this week's edition of the ND Watch Party. This week, we're going to break down the 1999 Notre Dame USC game. I'm joined by Irish All American Reggie Brooks and Tim O'Malley from Irish Illustrated. And guys, I think we're going to have a lot of fun with this game. It had not been a great season for Notre Dame. When you set it up, they had the fourth toughest schedule in the country, and they had lost some heartbreaking games. They went to Michigan, and they lose in the final minute. Tom Brady was Michigan's quarterback. They go to Purdue, lose in the final minute. Drew Brees was Purdue's quarterback. They go to Michigan State, and they lose. Nick Saban was the head coach at Michigan State. But they were on a bit of a roll heading into USC. They uh, they were three and three. And I think, guys, this game proves that between these two teams, the record really doesn't matter. It was a heck of a game. Yeah, you mentioned who they lost to with some of those legends and Hall of Famers. They also beat Bob Stoops a couple of weeks prior to this game uh, with Oklahoma. There's not a lot of not a lot of teams are going to play Oklahoma, Tennessee, USC, Michigan in the same season. And that's what Notre Dame had set up in 99. Of course, they lost to Michigan State at home. Yeah, a lot of close games. I mean, you know, think that was how many times have we lost to all of our Big Ten opponents in the same season. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah in that's three, always three weeks. Tough yeah. one. Um, so you know, I was really, uh, it was really interesting to to watch kind of how this season played out. Um, I mean, we had talent. It was just you know, kind of tough. We just never never rhythm. I mean, you know, I said you lose to to Michigan State, then come back and, and beat Oklahoma. And it's just like, what team What team are you watching from week to week was the challenge? Well, they had a new offensive coordinator, Kevin Rogers, highly touted coming from Syracuse, where he coached Donovan McNabb. But that was the knock on this team, very inconsistent, and, and a defense that was veteran but never really came together. Yeah, if you're – I remember it being a more on offense first team and going back and looking it up. They were they were 30th in total offense in the country. The problem is they gave up. They only scored one and a half more points per game than they did to their opponents. If you're going to average 30 a game and give up 28 and a half, that's going to be a problem over 11, 12 games. So certainly the natives were a little bit restless. Bob Davey, uh, the head coach, and of course, his third year as we start the, the game now. Uh, USC 3-2, and two, Notre Dame 3-3, three and three, 71st meeting. It was unusual in that this was one of the few times, only the second time in 13 years, that at least one of the teams was not ranked. But you can see uh, from the crowd uh, that folks were fired up for this contest. The Notre Dame started first. Senior class had never beaten USC, by the way, heading into this game. Which is incredible, considering every senior class for 13 seasons prior was going undefeated against USC. Of course, Jerry is Jackson, the quarterback, very athletic quarterback. You'll see a lot of option in this game run by Notre Dame, but not with a lot of success. They were also ran, like I said, on, early on, they jumped into an unbalanced set. And, you know, and I think, you know, you know, USC overplayed a lot of it. I mean, I don't think they really did a good job of negating the speed of USC's defense early on with this set. And again, it was just a lot of things I think I think we could have done a little better job of. Great job there by Lipinski out of the backfield. But I just think we never really early on neutralized that team speed um, with some of the things that we were doing early on, especially in the run game. Now, the first ball carrier was Tony Fisher. He's going to get the ball again here. First possession of the game. There's the option. And uh, Tony's trying to make a cut here and just lost his footing. And again, you got tight end there. You got to stay on your block. I mean, that's again, that's a lot of the our big big runs that I had were because of blocking downfield. And you know, you got to be better. And like I said, you know, Bobby Brown, Joey Gatherall, they got some guys that are tough enough and competitive enough to get out there and compete. It, it, early on, it just didn't seem like we we came to play, and that's very unusual when you're playing USC. I think that's a good point, Reggie, because that was Jabari Holloway, who's a future NFL player, missing that block. Yeah. You know, th there's a lot of talent out there that did not have a good first half, not to give anything away here. <laughs> USC ball now, Mike Van Raphorst, the quarterback. That runner is Chad Morton. That's a nine-yard run there. Of course, the guy to watch is number 18, R.J. Soward, one of the best receivers in the country this year. He's going to touch the ball a lot in this game. And, again, what I liked about this kid – very quick feet, get in, get in and out of his breaks really really quickly, and you know he was he was 
jazzed up. I mean, he came to play, and you get you see jump cut and really getting after it. Good job in our defense. I think our defense played well enough. It was just like I said, we didn't really get our give ourselves a lot of good opportunities early on offensively, and it put our defense in some tough spots. He played against Johnny. Chad Morton's brother, right, John? Johnny Morton, right, Reggie? Yep. Yes. But Johnny Sanders, number five, had a very good game. D. Cooper did as well. Corners were a strength on this defense. Oh, without a doubt. And, and, and one of the biggest strengths, like I said, they were good tacklers. The thing that I think we played a lot, very loose early on, and USC was taking advantage of that by with the quick passes, getting that West Coast style offense. And, you know, they did a good job of, again, moving us and, and really, you know, kind of really keeping us off balance uh, offensively, you know, run and pass. But I think, you know, early on we had some opportunities. It's just, you know, here we're in a man-to-man -man and great job there by the receiver, a little pick play, and boom, touchdown. Windrow Hayes, USC came into this game with one of the fastest, if not the fastest, receiving core in the country. Four guys who ran the 100 in 10.34 or faster. Yeah, I mean, That's hard to say. he's always known for their speed. So, you know, I knew going in, this is a game, again, You're gonna, it's going to be a track meet. And, you know, I think early on we were trying to match up and <laughs> we just couldn't early on. I think it's if we say records don't matter with these two. It also doesn't matter what USC's record is. They have talent. No matter no matter what they put out there, they have talent. And the same can be said, in all honesty, for Notre Dame. Sure. I mean, there there were a lot of very talented guys. You can make an argument that this Notre Dame team should not have been five and seven. But I really think one of the largest determining factors is you see USC speed on defense there, and I think that's one of the reasons they couldn't run the option. USC just overran it was the schedule. The schedule was so tough. Notre Dame was close, but they never got good momentum in this season. And they and won they in this lost. game until the second half. Right. They lost Rosenthal and Pettigrew to the first, you know, first round draft picks and also Autry Denson. I think that as good as Tony Fisher was and this line was quality, that's that's some serious talent to lose over the offseason. That's Bobby Brown. I'm sure everybody remember that name. Very talented receiver. He's gone on to do great stuff in his professional life. And I like it here, but again, you, you brought up a good point, Tim. Losing th that offensive line, you know, that's where we look. We seem to struggle early on. Um, yeah. Is I mean, if, if Jarris didn't get the ball out quickly, they were on him immediately. And not a lot of opportunities for him uh, to to sit back and, and and go through go through his progressions because they just we, we were really struggling in pass protection. Again, right there, seventy eight falling down, poor poor footwork. And the balance, and like I said, that's where, again, a Rosenthal would be. He would yeah. shut that down. Now, that, this is Tony Fisher. Previous pass, though, you saw some replays. Joey Getherall, he had a huge game in this game. Seven catches for 73 yards, his best game of the season. Maybe the fact he's from Los Angeles might have had something to do. Yeah. That and just the, the, the toughness. I mean, Joey Getherall is one of the toughest players I've ever seen play. You know, not the biggest guy. But he gets after and did a lot of his work in, tier, in, in the interior. And we're looking at this play here. Option, I, I was I was baffled that we stuck with the option for that long, where we have had those opportunities in up the seam with Joey, um, you know, then, then uh, Bobby Brown on the outside. I think we, we should have stuck with that a little bit more because there were some opportunities there um, up the seam uh, with Joey. And he did a great job on several, again, Bobby Brown here making the catch. You know, it gets a little, little, little chatty. This is, this is why this is a rivalry. That's a first down. Third down pass for a first down. Nice job here of getting getting the receiver, getting the DB to turn turn the and turn the ships and run, sit it down. That was a tough pass though to get that over that linebacker and get that in there. That was you know, Jarius Jackson to me is a, was always to me an underrated passer. Yeah, he's my answer to who would thrive in the modern spread. Darius Jackson at quarterback would be tremendous. And still you see fullback still prevalent in the late 90s in college football. <laughs> Got to love Bob it. Pinsky again. Great job there. And like I said, again, because they were, you know, USC flowed so hard, those quick hitters were there. If you can get that, you know, nice little trap here, uh, influence block. And again, a, those quick hitters were were effective against USC. I just think we we didn't didn't stick with it enough 
because they were going they were not going to let us get to the outside using their speed He had a lot on his plate, Darius Jackson, didn't he? <laughs> For this yeah, offense. He there was... very, very athletic, but a lot of things to do. Very complicated offense. Donovan McNabb said that Kevin Rogers' offense was more difficult, more complicated than the Philadelphia Eagles offense. There goes Julius Jones. I I really thought he would have gotten a look, lot more. I mean, you know, he's young, but I said a lot more right. action in this game because he was one of the most, at least in the first 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 half one of the most effective runners we had, you know. Reggie, coming into the game, he had 14 carries on the season. Yeah, He's that's... a freshman, but they had not been using him. And, and that's, I think that's, you know, one of the, the issues he had, I think, because he was a freshman, you know, I don't know if he didn't know all the plays. Again, like I said, it was a complicated offense, but to not be able to get him on the field and, and, and showcase what he was able to do. And again, this, is, this, this was not going to work. Right. I mean, again and again, we kept trying that option. You know, it would have been nice if we'd had some sort of counter off of that because they were flowing fast. Julius is one of those guys. you got to find a way to make something simple for him to have yeah. a, a weekly role. He's just too too explosive not to be out there more. Again, like I said, you gotta, you know, he has to get rid of the ball because you could see guys were coming off blocks. You know, five-step drop, if, if it's not coming out – out of the, out of his hands on that fifth step, it's it's not, it's he's they're going to be out. They were going they were all over. And, and here's a problem that they had all season. Jim Sanson had been demoted the previous week. David Miller from Penn High School. That was his first field goal attempt, and you, the whole execution was bad. It got about four feet off the ground. So the ball goes back to USC. They still lead seven nothing. And there go running back again, making the play. We had him. We had him stopped at the line of scrimmage. You got to tackle. You got to tackle. That is, you know, this game is about is blocking and tackling. But Soward can't pull that in, and the defense comes up with a three and out at the time they desperately needed it. Again, I think again, we our defense gave us some opportunities, um, you know, early on. But again, they got hit with a, that, that one again. That was I think that was just kind of a little pick play, and we just didn't take advantage of it offensively. And again, there we go. You know, delayed draws, again, hitting downhill, coming off the ball. Our offensive line was not adapted enough to be able to run with their their defenders. So being able to come straight off the ball and hit them, that was, that's where our advantage was. And we, we did not take advantage of that. Now, Bobby Brown wanted interference on that play, but didn't get it. You can't, you can't expect that call. Terrence Howard, but that's a third down and seven play comes up short. So Notre Dame is kicking the ball away again. Joey Hillbold was busy, especially in the first half. You know, we talk about Jones that probably give Coach Davian, and Coach Rogers some credit. They did have Tony Fisher who went to the Packers and Terrence Howard could play too. But uh, it's just the electricity that Julius brought is something that seemed like you could work it, work it in a little bit more. But it's not like they were playing bums ahead of him either. <laughs> exactly. All right, one of the things do you need to do as a running back? You got to pick up the blitz. You got to be able to block. Yeah. He's a freshman. I mean, it's it's there are very few that can just step in and be successful. Our guest athlete analyst today, it took Reggie a little while to become a mainline running back for this Notre Dame football team. And a lot of that was again, it said you got to be running downhill. And I get a lot of credit to Coach Earl Mosley that you know a lot of the drills that we did my senior year was focused on running downhill and not running sideways and, and really you know he he always said just give me four yards and then after four yards you can do what you want to do yeah. <laughs> all right we're running out of time here in the first quarter but usc is starting to move the ball and there's chad morton again and as reggie already pointed out he had a terrific game yeah. great balance you know just does a great job of keeping his legs moving leg drive and you know, keeping his pad level down, it's hard to get a good shot on him. Um, and, you know, and he made his pay. Last play of the quarter, huge play for USC. Oh, the safety, what are we doing? That that should never happen. And that's and a senior safety, too, at that point. <laughs> toward the end of the first, first half, you give up a first quarter, I mean, and you give up a big play like that because the safety is watching the quarterback instead of playing deep, playing his deep third. 
58-yard reception by Kareem Kelly. Now we're on your first play of the uh, second quarter. Behind USC's fridge. Did you see that? Number 75, oh, yeah, 75. fullback. Yeah. <laughs> Baise Mailo, number 75, from Hawaii, 330 pounds. He was a Hawaiian sumo wrestler. Wow. Yeah. And at that time, that's today 330 is common, not now. Look at this. Downhill. Whoa. Whoa. And like I said, USC always had those big offensive linemen that would, would again, they were big on eye, eye formation and coming off the ball and, and punching you in the mouth. All right, so now it's 14-0, but I will give both the Notre Dame team credit. It's USC, of course, they're not going to give up. Fans still very supportive. I mean, again, you're coming off the Lou Holtz cheers. You're not having a great season, but uh, there, was, there wasn't, from what I could tell from the broadcast, and we've got the natural sound on this, I think, up as we play this. So not a lot of grumbling, and that's a pretty good return by Jones. Julius Jones. I mean, again, you, I, I got to agree with Tim. You got to find a way to, to get him more touches and – you know, give him some more opportunities because he's he's an explosive player. And I believe that's Joey Gatherall doing it. It is. Game. Seven yards. But again, you look, Bobby Brown blocking downfield gives you that those extra yards, at, you know, at that point. And, and that's something Notre Dame had this year with Chase Claypool. He took great pride. Yeah. I mean, he, oh my gosh, yeah. that guy's a monster. I mean, I would love to play by him as yeah. if I'm a all right, guys, option again, and same outcome. Yeah, uh, it, it, it just, that was baffling to me that even in that in-game adjustment, you, you see it's not working. You got, I mean, you would think, and again, the the, the delayed draws, the, the off-tackle plays, you had some success there, but, you know, it's like, why would you not keep doing that? Yeah, and speaking of talent, that number six on the option pitch was three-time Super Bowl champion David Gibbons with the Patriots. Yeah. <laughs> they had, they had this players. passes to Javen Hunter. He's also had Good some job success. That man, there. except boom, if he doesn't get that ankle, he he might. That's my that might be a, a, a six six pointer right there. Jabari Holler, we got to be careful. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit behind. You know, don't need no penalties on that. All right, just ahead of Joey Gethrow, I want to give a quick weather update here because it's going to become very important. But at the start of this game, terrific weather on this October 16th, 1999, 69 degrees, partly sunny, a beautiful day for now. So wasn't the forecast to not have rain? Uh, <laughs> I can't remember if it was not I rain. I recalled Mike Collins mentioning that before the game, that there would not be rain. But, but there will be some weather. weather. And there will be some that shows up. There we are punting again. Again, those last two plays, you know, Jarris is <laughs> running for his life. Yeah. Right after the gate. You know, and that was that was kind of the, the, the first first half. You know, you take one step forward and two steps back. You know, one good play and then two busted plays back to back. And again, and Notre Dame goes to the Fiesta Bowl the following year, but boy, you could have used a fifth year Darius Jackson. It's just kind of a shame oh he wasn't God. still there. There's a nice slant pass by Raphorse, who had replaced Carlson Palmer, who broke his collarbone after Palmer had replaced him. Raphorse had been the starter for eight games the previous season. And again, he was he was tossing it around. Great catch there. Yeah, soured and pretty good. That's a 19-yard reception. We had to go. We had to go to a, a I mean, a, a zone look. I mean, early on we were trying to match up and go man, and that was the speed was too much. And again, when you're able to force someone to go zone, they have to sit back. And you know, he did a great job of finding those open seams, open uh, throwing lanes, and his receivers did a good job of catching the football. Nice little drive here. Third and one is always great for an offensive coordinator. You can throw the ball and there easy goes. first down to Sour. Yeah. Yeah, that was like I said. They were those quick passes, you know, push the ball. And, you know, we tackled well, but again, just their speed um, you know, just gave us trouble that first first half. And there, there he goes again. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's, a, he's special. As I said, with Johnny Morton, his older brother, they had some talent in that family. You had a talented older brother. He had a talented older brother, Reggie. 
And this yeah. gentleman's name is Sultan McCullough. He was a decent back as well. He was supposed to be their, one of their fastest players too, right, Jack? McCullough? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Ted Morton kind of had that, just that ability in space, though. he I don't know what his 40 would have been, but I know what it is on a football field. It's just very quick in, in, in short space. Morton oh, was inbounds, in but he wasn't. They're um, sour, but didn't matter because he was uh, he was wide open on this one. Yeah, I, I'm wondering because they were in an unbalanced. I'm wondering if there was some sort of bust coverage on that. Um, it was Hayes on the out of bounds one, but sour at that time. There was Clifford Jefferson slipped on the play. OK, that's that's the big reason he was wide open. So an 83 yard drive in 11 plays and it's 21 nothing. USC over Notre Dame. And Julius I remember Jones the feeling that the show his the stands was rough there because that's Notre Dame had just won two in a row and after losing three straight, you just feel like at 500, you're down 21 nothing to USC. It's it's not good. It's not looking good. good. Like I said, actually, I want to get really, really frustrated oh, watching this game. <laughs> I'm sure this play frustrated you, Reggie. Mm, yeah. Oh, not this one. <laughs> yes. And that was the thing about it is like. This you know, drive, I got to play ahead of myself. That's a great 50-yard pass to Julius Jones. And this is the thing that it gets me is, again, great job here. The, the line, the line, they were in, I don't know if they, they mixed up. They were a man that they were trying to bracket. The linebacker, I think he was supposed to run with Julius, and he stepped up and, and, and lost track of him. Now, this is the play I bet frustrated you. Yeah. Well, again, it's the option. Why are we, why are we still running the option? It's not been successful all game. And then you, you put your quarterback in that position that where he gives up the football and boom, you, 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 you're moving the ball. And again, two steps forward, three steps back. And right there, why is number 18 not surrounded by people? Because you know, he's fast. Yeah. <laughs> well, but play action, what are you looking at? Yeah, I know it's play action, number seven, but you're the safety. You're not going to make that play at the line of scrimmage. Keep your foot back there and don't let play action. You know it's coming. That had to be the first instance of the win, right? Because that was really yeah, up that was he. That would have worked. And again, they're trying to capitalize. Notre Dame with the 50-yard completion to Jones. It's first and 10 at the 18. Jackson fumbles. They go to the flea flicker. But he's throwing into a very stiff wind, and it goes short. And then after that, this is really the first time in the game that the Notre Dame defense starts to slow down the USC offense. And again, we we started to get some penetration again because they were, he had all day to throw. I mean, that was that was a poor throw there, but their offensive line, we were not getting anything early on. And little by little, we started to get some penetration, get some gaps, come off, and boom, get in his face. And as you saw, you know that was a, that was a pressure pressure interception by getting in his face early on. And that was one of the first times we've done it all game. Boom! What what he gets a little flustered. See someone's flashes in him, he lets it go. And that was a heck of a catch, too. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a pretty D Cooper play, too. Uh, D Cooper, with the, right? inter- D. Cooper D. with the interception, and he hands it off to a Johnny Sanders for another, I don't know, five, six yards game. Yeah, but you see, again, that pressure in his face, I think that's where, you know, when we were able to start getting pressure on him and getting in his face, it really, you know, gave us some opportunities. And there that guy goes in again, inside scene, just like I said, good, makes a great, does a great job bending it in there. Safety fell down, but at the same time, you know, tough catch, you know, make, making plays. Joey Gatherall. Yeah. That pass deflected, but that, Gatherall's going to get was, in that here again. Been yeah, that maybe that's good that was deflected. <laughs> yeah. Joey Gatherall, again, the son of a now retired LAPD detective. Joey Getherall is now a member of the LAPD. He's a canine handler in the explosive detection unit. Always tough. Exactly. I mean, he just, that guy does it. He, I mean, he does a great job of working the interior of the defense. And that's where you got your linebackers and safeties. And to make those plays, you know, you got to have some toughness and some tenacity to go over, over the middle and, and, and catch the football knowing you're going to get popped. And here he is again. And a great catch, but also a great throw. I mean, Jarius had to stick that ball in there 
and, and really drive that ball to get that in there. Yeah, it was Bobby Brown with the drop previously. He had a really good senior year. He ends up having a, I think a 200 yard game in a losing effort later on this season, right back out in Pittsburgh. A very disappointing oh, losing effort. But Bobby Bobby Brown. Brown. Had Two steps back, here we go. <laughs> yeah, Bobby had a tough game. Yeah. Well, a lot of them, a lot of players did. It was just like, just the, the lack of consistency and, and, and the attention to detail. So little things that make the difference. And here we are again. It's like we take, we get moving, got some momentum, boom, 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 three plays in a row, we, bad plays, and boom, you're, you're, you're having to kick the field goal. And here's David Miller. Miller. Coach. The wide receiver coached offensive coordinator, right, Jack? Reggie, would that be good? <laughs> <laughs> David Miller, 37 yard field goal to make a 21 3 play for Chris Giesman at Penn High School. And I don't want to give it away because I know a lot of people watching weren't even alive when this game was played. But the only field goals that David Miller ever kicked were in this game. And James Caputo, walk on holder may have had the biggest game of any holder in Notre Dame history because the snaps weren't that good. That's off to him. That's off to him. That was, a, that was he did a great job of, like I said, recovering, uh, recovering on that. Kickers are Reggie's favorite position, I think, other than tailback. Well, you got to yeah. go to the run it back for the 99, 92 uh, USC game because Reggie paid compliments to kickers, and I almost no, passed no, out during no, the broadcast. No, no, let's be clear. I did not pay compliments to kickers. I paid a kicker, compliments yes. to my friend and my teammate, Craig Hendrick, who was a football player. <laughs> There's a difference. All right, this is the obviously the end of the first half. Again, like I said, again, just get getting out of that. <laughs> having, and I don't. Why do we call, we call it a timeout? Yeah, because you can just fumble this punt. That's what that that situation is. Yeah. And then yeah. Jones with another nice reception and gets out with one second left in the and half, that, which allows Notre Dame to run a play. Yeah. Why? That that was really. Like I said I'm like, why are we trying to run a play on you know in time call a timeout? That was just. I mean, let's get 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 in. Because again, that we that close from being a, a, a strip sack. That close well, was an interception to end the half. But Paul Hackett was clairvoyant going out of the locker room. He told NBC, 21 points, that's not enough points. So here we are beginning the second half, Notre Dame kicking off. And again, great job, special teams getting in there making plays. Now, this was the 25th anniversary of USC coming back from a 24-0 deficit to beat Notre Dame in 1974, 55-24, that USC team won the Rose Bowl. Does Notre Dame have it in itself to do the same thing to USC? We're going to see right here. This had to be frustrating, too, for Jarius, because he missed the game the year before, obviously. We saw the watch party by uh, tearing his knee up in the Tennessee game. week before, and Notre Dame couldn't score in that oh, game. LSU. The LSU game. Yeah, it's three, it's three halves uh, against USC without a touchdown here. But it looked like it was going to be more of the same in the first yeah. half. As this, as this second half started, I'm like, good, great. And they just, like I said, great job. Um, boom, boom. They're sorry again. Now, we should mention, before, before USC ran the first play of the half after the kickoff, they had to call a timeout. And I'm one of those believers, whenever you do something like that, it will come back to bite you before the game is over. Yeah, especially because first and 15 is fine to start a half. There's nothing wrong with that. You can, you can overcome that. Okay, and it looked like USC was going to march down the field. Rocky Boyman there with a big Great tackle. Job. Do you recall why he didn't start? Go ahead. I thought he started most of this year. Maybe, I mean, it could be anything. It could be a little ankle injury, but he's a he becomes a great player the next season. 21 years ago, my memory's not quite that good. No, I was wondering if he knew if he had a, a little ankle turn or something. I'm not sure. I don't remember. I'm sure somebody watching will comment because they will remember. Again, now they're, again, they move the ball all the way down there. Great play by Rocky. Kind of a miss, miss throw. Short, short, short arm to throw there. And again, we, we save face here. I think our defense, again, that bend don't break, uh, you know, mindset. I, I don't think it was their mindset, but they did a, a good job of, you know, resetting themselves 
and, and getting back after it. And, and Newberry's 29 yard field goal, 24 That could have easily been a touchdown if, if the way they were looking. Well, and I think that's huge. That's oh, absolutely yeah. huge because 28 uh, 3, whole different story. And mentally, it puts you out of it at 28 3. And here's the guy that you need to get here's the ball the to talking all day long. I mean, <laughs> why? <laughs> You got to find a way to get him the ball. <laughs> Huge return flag. Holloway called for a push in the back, so they had to bring it back. I miss kickoff returns. Okay, now that looks like it's intercepted, but it's not. No, I didn't. Yeah, I, I, I knew that one. But Notre Dame did have an ineligible receiver downfield. It didn't nullify the interception, but the ball did hit the ground. And again, we're shooting ourselves in the foot offensively. And it's those little mental errors and the mental mistakes that we're making. And right there, boom. Great job by Jarius of escaping. I mean, he kid was running for his life. Yeah. For, for a good portion of this game. And just for him to stick with it and keep after it is it, definitely impressive. I think Second they only 15. allowed about eight or nine sacks the year before. And I, I mean, I remember about 25, 26 in this season. It just was a different year for him as a senior. Yeah. That's a 16-yard pass to Bobby Brown on second and 15. It's one of the bigger plays in the game. And again, great job by Jerry to stay, stand in there and delivering a catchable ball over the defender, in between defenders. Uh, great ball by Jerry's. Great catch by um, Bobby. And again, we, we, we're getting momentum. Now, the, the biggest thing is can we keep that momentum going and, and, and finish a drive? I mean, we've not finished a drive all, all game. And even right, the, the pressure on the flea flicker, they yeah. call Jarius for intentional grounding on the play. On that? Wow. Yep. <laughs> Literally threw it in the, in, threw it in the end zone. I mean, threw it in the, uh, in, the, in the stand. At least throw it out of bounds, you know, over the sideline. Not that, that far, though. And again, you know, it's not a big play here, but three, four yards. And where did it come? Up the middle. And I think we had some opportunities there. And Jairus is running for his life again. Yeah. If anytime he, like I said, because they were, they had no respect for our play action pass. They were coming downhill and, you know, to, to keep continuing, you got to establish something before you're going to do the uh, play action pass. Good job here. On the, uh, but again, not getting the blocking downfield. One more block and he uh, has lane there. Yeah. But it's a good call for an over-pursuing defense, and then you add on a personal foul, and this drive has some momentum. They saved us. <laughs> USC's uh, poor discipline saved us. Nice run here by Tony Fit, Dr Tony Driver. And again, it's a off-tackle play. It's a little counter. That, you know, running off tackle, running up the middle, quick hitters, works against USC in this Boom, right there. Good job. Three yards there by uh, Lipinski. You know, those, if you continue hitting those plays, those break. Tony Driver back at running back, huh? Because 98, I know he intercepted Drew Brees to win the game in yeah. 2000. He's a honorable mention at All-American Safety. That's, uh, that's tough moving around like that. And then to be a fourth string running back, too. <laughs> Mr. Gibbons there. And guys, right now, during this drive, a light rain started to fall. And right now, Notre Dame has a very strong wind at its back. And nice job with the curl. I said the, the bend it in. And, you know, again, I don't disagree with this play. I think we can do better up front. We, they, we struggle coming off the ball. But too many men in the field for USC. Yeah. Now, see, back back when I played, our law offensive line would have still blocked 13 guys. <laughs> they, blocked them they still would have blocked them. And we're about to get it right back. Yeah. Man, Jabari had a rough day. <laughs> he had a rough day. <laughs> he will make up for it before. Yes, he does. Uh, yes, yeah, he does. watches it over. First and goal at the seven, folks. That's his, what, second, third penalty this, this game. Looking at this, first and goal. I used to love this call. Ooh. This is a Kevin Rogers special, the throwback. Nice. Another pro tight end. Got to take care of those big fellas. 
Can 24, I say the one five beams? There's another pro tight end, Dan O'Leary. And Dan had a lot on his plate because Dan in this game is also the long snapper. And he did a lot of great things, which was good because he did not have a future as a long snapper. <laughs> Nice Another look job. at the play, guys. But again, you look at it, they're, they get them pursuing, and that was, like I said, over-pursuing, because that's what USC, they're going to run to the football. So like I said, perfect play call there. And again, we're, 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 moving, we're moving in the right direction. Now, one of the good things that Jim Sanson did in this game, he'd been demoted, but almost every one of his kicks went into the end zone or out of the end zone, and that eliminated Soward, one of the best kickoff return men in the nation from having an impact in that aspect of the game. Another look at the TV. I got to tell you, those Notre Dame kickers in the late 90s, one of my friends, Scott Sendrup, was a kicker for the Irish. And uh, they, they had some, uh, they were, they did not have a great kicking situation necessarily in the post Holtz era. And he had a shirt they all wore. It said, Notre Dame kickers, we hate you too. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I mean, I figured Jim Sanson getting benched. He was a game winning kicker three years prior. You got to find that shirt. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> you got to find that shirt. I would wear that. Yeah. <laughs> Joe Farrar with a big play here. He made a number of big plays in the game. Night, now you can see this defense. It's like we woke up. You know, guys are really starting to fly around and make plays, get penetration um, against this USC defense. And, it, you know, you, you look here, boom. Get You see it a little bit of – not a lot of pressure, but you get him moving – and don't let him set up, he's going to struggle. And offensive yeah. pass interference to boot, of course, refused. So the Irish get a three and out. Huge, huge break for the, for the offense. Great job by the defense of stepping up and getting the ball back. Anybody else see the punch thrown at number 42 there in Notre Dame? Just hit him in the face. <laughs> and... This was a little trick play. One of Kevin Rogers, you haven't thrown out it. They had not thrown out of the option the entire season. They thought they could catch USC off guard, but the speed nullified it. Yeah, because the option hasn't hasn't worked. <laughs> so why do you keep trying to throw off a of, play action off of something that hasn't worked? So this did work. Throw it to Getheroff. Yeah, he's yeah, tearing them up. He, again, let him work the middle of the field. You know, they tried to get him one-on-one. -on -one. Great job of pushing the defender up the field. Come back, sit down, catch the football. Quick throws. When when this whole game, like I said, when when uh, Jarius had the you know five step and you know try to set up, not great. Again, running for his life. Well, I was clear. USC had made the decision that Jarius was not going to beat them yeah. with his legs. Yeah, I mean because they were blitzing again. That that coming hard after him. And that's why, again, those quick passes work, especially over the middle, because most of the blitzes were coming, you know, off tackle, off the edge, or up the middle, to where they were forcing him to, you know, if he couldn't get rid of the ball quickly, you, you, you're going to have a problem. So clearly the defense here has to come up with a stop. USC is throwing into the wind, and it's raining hard now. Anthony Demon there, that's my all-time underrated team at linebacker. He's the team MVP the next year, I think, in 2000. And he made some plays in this game as well, especially in this half. And good job tackling. You know, and they're going to catch. They're going to get, they're, with their speed, they're going to get us off the ball. And those, like I said, those, you know, stop routes are going to be there. And, you know, this is where the jump cut is not the best thing to do at our right running sideways. Just said when you get rain starts coming down, field gets a little slick. You gotta, like I said, you know, be mindful of like your footing, and and, and really give yourself a chance you know, as a running back. And you know, here's where again I think we, you know, good job put him in, in third down situation. And USC was much better in this game at third down situations. At one point, Notre Dame was one for nine. USC had consistently converted their third downs. And that's what I said. That's where you got to be. You know, when you're able to convert third downs, you're going to give yourself a chance to, to win ball game. And the rain is taking its toll here pretty clearly. There's people slipping at the line of scrimmage all the time. Because yeah. usually, actually, we always let the grass grow a little high when we played USC. So yes. if it rains, it does get pretty slick. <laughs> you got to wear those uh, uh, those three eighth cleats. 
Ron right. Israel with a huge hit. I wish we had a graphic. Big play alert. Big play alert. Because yeah. this may be the biggest play in the game. That had a little bit of uh, Kenyon Tatum to it, jumping over the block and making a hit. That was that was pretty good. And Anthony Denman recovered it. Look at that. Yeah. And awesome job of hit it, timing that. Timing that blitz was he timed that perfectly. Now you're you're you you got your setup on their their side of the ball. You got to capitalize on this. Jones right up the middle. That's first and ten on the thirty-six. And and again, three four yards. You know, falling forward. You know, driving the ball down the field. It's a, it's okay to stick with that. You don't have to get cute. Great defensive play. I remember this was the point in the game where you could feel the giant momentum switch to Notre Dame. It now felt like actually Notre Dame was going to win the game. Now they still had a long way to go, but it was a huge switch. I think most of this year I felt like something was going to happen where they were going to either win or lose on the last play. So that was that was the momentum I felt back in the day. <laughs> and, and you knew, and, and I agree with Charlie Weiss and all the coaches before them, you are what your record says you are, but this was better than a 5-17. and 17, yeah. And they were better than that here. They had a terrible November. They went 0-4 in November. But this was a game where they, their talent showed through in the second half. And, again, receivers blocking on the edge, get the ball to Joey Gatherall and let him do it. But great job by Bobby Brown. I cannot, you know, exp you know press that enough that – when you have success in the run game, short pass game, it's because you have guys on the edge blocking and, and really getting after. Reggie, here's a play you like, an option play that works. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, they finally, you know, take took the back. That was that was a poor read by the uh, number 44. He went too quick. If if he didn't try, he didn't string it out at all. And that's what they had been doing all game. They had slow played it to where it was just stringing the stringing the ball out, to where it, you know put put the you know put us in a tough situation where you know Jarius was having to pitch early and they always had that extra guy in there. Nine yard gain, second and one, last play of the third quarter. And keep giving this kid the ball. I mean, he just hits the hole so fast. I know, and, and that's what I said. You those you hit it up in there, hit it up in there. Something's going to break. First and 10 on the 13. Notre Dame's got an illegal shift right there. It's obvious. Say, it illegal. <laughs> <laughs> that was a shift. But right now, maybe the most important shift of the game occurred. For some reason, no one knows why, the wind shifts. And it is remains. It went from behind Notre Dame going to the north end zone. It's now behind Notre Dame going to the south end zone. And I remember I read I read about this. Uh, Jerry is saying I I thought the wind shifted, but I didn't want to tell anybody because they'd say I was crazy that it can't happen. <laughs> well, Paul Hackett said we're on the sideline, and and I said to my assistants, now they're changing the wind direction. What are we gonna do? It's Notre Dame Stadium. Our lady is is got us covered. Plus, well, error was still alive there. at the time. Error was known for having the power to change the direction of the wind and stop the rain. Big run there by Jackson. And again, boom, poor, poor blocking. You let the, let the defensive end come across your face, but great job by Jairus of escaping. But again, running, running for his life <laughs> the entire game. Man, I hope they gave him Mondays off from practice because he took some beatings every week. Yeah. I mean, just, just the, I mean, it's again, it just this constant. Now he misses Terrence Howard, who's wide open here in the flat. Still. <laughs> but Terrence comes back to a, throw, a key block. And now, now again, we're, 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 we're in a position. We have an opportunity. Finish the drive. Great push. Up. Power T, you like that. Yeah, and again, power run. Come off the ball. Don't try. You not. You don't have to chase. I said USC's defense. They had a big offensive line, but their defensive line wasn't always that big. And if you come off the ball hard, you're gonna knock them off the ball. Boom! And you got some some backs hitting it downhill. Uh, great job by uh, Tony Driver, just barreling it up in there. Now, sports testing rules say after a touchdown, you say it's 24-17, but not with this kicking game. Oh. Wow! Snap, mishandled. 
not a good snap. PAT not good, so it's 24-16. That's, that's, that's discouraging. Great. Now that fourth string, fourth string running back, Tony Driver, with a touchdown run. That's almost <laughs> Holtz era running back depth right there. Yeah. But again, look, like I said, just play behind your pass, but great job by the offensive line coming off the football. Right now, USC is going to get the ball, and for the first time in the game, it is absolutely pouring. Look at that wind for that kickoff, too. That is... Yeah, he, that, he just took <laughs> off. The wind had shifted. But wind doesn't bother you when you're running the ball. Morton yeah. gets 10 on that run. Three yard game here. Coming downhill again. Get behind those big Morton. guys. Now, Reggie, they throw on this down. You agree with that? Well, I don't have a problem with it because, again, they, they had the run game working, play action. But, again, that's just a bad pass. Well, now it's third and seven. I'll say this. He had his hands on the ball. He, he should have caught that football. Graphics at third and six. I think it was third and seven. That's a oh. hit. But Johnny Sanders and you look at the helmet look, off Wendrell Hayes. But watch the throw. his last two throws. Last few throws have been high. And that would not be allowed today. No, it would not be allowed. Oh, yeah, he's right out of the game. That, that's that's targeting. You got to go. And on this broadcast, everybody said, "Great hit, great hit." Yes. I'm it's amazed so Hayes got up. That, that, I'm he, glad that that's not allowed anymore today. He is. No, I'm glad it's not allowed anymore. But it was so fun he to watch. He would be out for this game, the rest of this game, and next game too. <laughs> so Notre Dame's got it back. First and ten after the bad punt. On the USC, 44. Yeah, punting into the wind with this rain, that's not an enviable task, though. Yeah. And again, the ball is slick. And you could, I got the sense the ball was slick. The quarterback, last cut, those last two throws were high, and it looked like they sailed on him a little bit. And then, Man, there you go again. Yeah. It's, balls, you can start seeing when the balls get slick, they start, they start to flop. What do you do now, Reggie? You take your gloves off if you're a wide receiver, if it's that wet? Well, again, they had those Newmans back then, and those were horrible yeah. when they got wet. So you'd be better <laughs> off just take, get, take, 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 taking the gloves off and going barehanded. Now, nice catch there by Dan O'Leary. It's not enough for the first down, but USC has called for holding Dan O'Leary before he caught the ball. And see, these are the things, like I said, that, that can cost you a game, those mental, mental mistakes down, down, down the road. In the fourth quarter, third, fourth quarter, when you're making mistakes, that can cost you. And I, I really think after a while, um, Jairus got a little happy feet. You know, he, because yeah. he's been running for his life, he, he, he wasn't, you know, sitting back and, and really, um, you know, sit back in the pocket and, and he, he take off quickly. And for whatever reason, I don't know what, I don't know if we changed something up here, but we were able to get the quarterback to the edge. And I think maybe we start blocking the edge a little better to where we get Der Jairus on, on the corner because for the longest time, we weren't blocking that end guy. And it's looking like we're getting blocking there to get to the edge where we get, get the option going a little bit. Do you think the fact the field was like a skating rink now in terms of being slippery had anything to do with it? Well, I, I really think that we changed, they changed up the blocking scheme to get to the edge where instead of leaving that, that in defender free right away. We blocked him and tried to you know, block that. You look to um, free up the outside guy. And Kevin Rogers does give a lot of looks. I mean, the backfield keeps switching. They're, they're flexing into wishbone. They're, they're, I, it does seem like a complicated offense to learn, but also if you, you're making the defense change its eyes a lot. Well, yeah, if nothing else, it adds doubt. When you see a wishbone, you're like, well, what are we doing? Who do we get? Yeah, two plays later was wishbone. That was shotgun two back right there. That's. Of course, you can't be good at everything either. There's the other. There's the other theory involved. You, you, maybe you're trying too much. All right. So now you got to call on David Miller for a 33-yard field goal. And gentlemen, David Miller made two field goals in his Notre Dame career, and they were both in this game. Nice job. He looked real natural. Like I said, a nice, nice little natural flow. Good, good, good swing. And he ended up getting hurt a few games later. And then Sanson got the job back, and Miller never 
after his injury, attempted another field goal, and he never made another one after this game. The defense gets a lot of credit for this. At this point in the game, Notre Dame had run in the second half 33 plays, USC only 13. Did you say they never made another field goal after this game? That's correct. Wow. Well, now you know why that shirt existed, right? You know, but every time he goes to any uh, South Bend uh, area drinking establishment, uh, he still gets his drinks paid for, I'm sure. (laughs) Great job there again. Defense, you got him running. You get the quarterback running, you you have an opportunity, have a chance. And we really started to get after him again. Those little quick slants, we were on top of him. I think we stuck said started to kind of play up a little tighter to take those quick hits away. And because again, we were able to get get off the ball um, defensively. And, you know, just really you started to see, like I said, Jack said, you know, the you can see the momentum change. Third and five. It's the time. Nice slant over the middle. Yeah, right? that's a nice catch in this condition, too. They convert. And this is, again, what I said, they, they did a great job of converting third downs, this, you know, this game. And I said that, normally like I said, that, that leads to, can lead to a win, but fortunately for us, things worked in our favor. But again, great job by the defense. Quick pass, come up, make the tackle. And at this yeah, point, right <laughs> yeah. let's go, Leprechaun. Van Raphorst at this point is having real trouble yeah. throwing the football. That yeah, last completion was the last big completion he had to a wide receiver in the game. And at this point, the ball is just soaking wet. And I know they had numerous balls, but it was raining so hard, there were no dry balls at this time. I think at this point, we could be glad Carson Palmer's not a senior starting for them. <laughs> <laughs> And that he's injured. Yeah. Yes. And again, all, all those balls are high. And out of bounds. And a great defensive play. Some controversy about whether or not he stepped on the sideline, but the definitive replay confirmed. Is that Jason Beckstrom? Yes, Jason Beckstrom did a terrific job. That one looks yep. a little questionable, but they yep. had another angle. Can't remember if we showed all the angles here. The angle from the north end zone showed he stepped out of bounds. Well, they deserve some bad calls. Well, that wouldn't, and again, it wasn't a back call, but again, again, the ball started to sell on him, and there's number 22 again. I mean, 17 yard return. North and south, downhill. I, I, I love this kid. You know, I've always thought, thought the world of Julius in terms of his ability um, to play at a high level. And I'm, I'm like you, Tim. Like I said, you, you got to find a way to get this freshman. Yeah, he's a freshman, but he's, you got to put him on the field. Huge play here, guys. Yeah, it looked like they they were covering Fisher out of the backfield at the at the beginning of that play. I've got to see him peel, he peels off. Well, 27 yards Looking. on the play. You're throwing into the yeah. wind. Maybe that made it sail. So, if you hit him perfectly, he's gone. Great job of, like I said, the, the, the receiver, you know, taking the inside track and pulling, pulling the corner. And, again, the linebacker just, you know, he just, like I said, followed for a minute and then just let him go. That was very similar to the one earlier. Just Ooh. over the head of Bobby Brown. Oh. I've so now you're second and so ten. I gotta hit that one. <laughs> it's actually second and ten at the Ooh. forty-six. Ooh. Man, I, I I just I love the way he hits the hole. I mean, he he boom, he hits the hole with a lot of tenacity. Right, you're looking for Jabari Holloway to contribute. He does right here. Oh, there you go. Ooh. That's, That's, a a fourth catch. Catch. That's a heck of a catch because that was not a yeah. great throw. <laughs> Twelve yard game. A little redemption. Ooh. Oh, you can tell the rain is doing this though. The, the... Yeah. The ball's coming out it's terrible. Just coming out. Yeah. Tony Fisher. Again. Just Seven hit. yards. Nice little uh, uh, downhill off guard play. Just run the ball downhill. Okay. 
Make them stop it. Make them stop it. There we go. Let's see. Boom. Just keep keep it coming. Big shift in momentum. I like it when they go two tight ends too, especially when they're two future pros at tight end. Ooh. Get something out of nothing there. Three yard gain for Jones. So it's second and seven from the 18 on this key Great play. Job keeping his feet. One of the strangest things you'll ever see. Bumble. <laughs> and Jabari Holloway. Yeah, who was not really in the picture. I know he was obviously close, but he just looks like he got shot back into the picture on that. Holloway saw it, dives in, recovers it, and Notre Dame leads 25-24. Now, I, I, I'm looking at uh, Jarius. I understand why you're late it, but hey, man. Hold on to that gum ball. You can't fumble that ball. <laughs> you got to put that ball away. Do a great job. Boom. Hits in the. Get the ball. Get the ball put away. Well, they had very little luck this year. So maybe that was evening <laughs> out a little bit. <laughs> well, if you're going to have a bad year and you have one game where you want a little luck. Oh, this is right. this looked, like he talked, looked like he punched him in the face. He did. He got hit right in the face. You know, that happened to uh, wow. Kaiser when they beat Miami here. He fumbled going in and Durham Smythe dove on it to save the game. Great. USC made a mistake there. They hadn't made the whole game. They had not been over pursuing. They over pursued Jarius on that, on that rush. Yeah, because they they were closing on him quickly. And again, he he finally got it done. Now today, he, they didn't grab the face mask, but they hit him in the face. Would that be a personal foul today, or is that still oh, all right? Well, no. Now in the, well, no, because he's a, he's a runner, so he's not a in defense. the pocket a little bit, right? Yeah. yeah if he was in the pocket, he got swung, got hit in the head. Yeah, that penalty, but you know, not 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 in a play like that because he didn't give himself up. He was, you know, full runner. Well, Two point that, conversion, the logical yeah. thing to do, up one. Is it logical because you want to get up to by three yards? Is it logical because yeah. your kicking game is not great? <laughs> Both. <laughs> but I think it's I think kicking game good or not, you, you got to go up three. Yeah. I mean, two point lead doesn't do you any good. But certainly, it, uh, the kicking game situation made it a no-brainer of any kind. No one asked the question. No one, yeah, no one's going to question it. No, no one had to be told. Not a great time for a uh, kick that doesn't go back, but it's R.J. Soward, huh? Yeah. And he's, but he's kicking into the wind. And he fumbles the ball. Ooh, nice and guess who recovers it, Reggie? Oh, I do remember this. Yes, I do remember this part. He didn't get it in the end zone against the win, but Jim Sanson comes back, and he recovers the fumble. That's a football player, Reggie. There's a football player diving in all no. those big guys. No. No? No. Sorry. Can't, can't give it to him. He was, he was just in the way. By the way, Beckstrom causes the strip. Jason Beckstrom had a heck of a game. And, and Samson was in the way and just fell and <laughs> fell down on the ball. That's that's what I'm I'm going to go with that. He just fell down on the he ball. The hell, come on. He dove back. No, no. He misses the tackle, which I thought you'd pick up on and point out. But he came that's back. He, to he get fell it. down. It. He fell down. Here's your kicker. Yeah. I didn't make the tackle, he but he kept back up. Look, he's up. He didn't fall down. Right. He tried to make awesome. the tackle. He's, I hope he's trying to stay out of the way. Look at him put yeah. his nose into that pile. He fell down on it. He didn't he jump dove on he it. He fell down on the ball. He, he fell on the ball. ball. He literally fell on the ball. Because all right, now by all intents and purposes, the game should be over. Yeah, but, but the way this cool. season is going, 223 left. <laughs> it's not over yet. No. It looks like it on this first run. 11 yard gain. Game should be over. Notre Dame's in control. Slipping and sliding. Clocks running down. You can see how long the grass is. When part of your shoe disappears in the green, you know the grass is long. I used to walk in the for the U.S. The ground crew just forgot to get after it, you know, mow it down. It was it was a simple oversight. That's all. If you were playing golf, you would call that U.S. Open rough. Yeah, this grounds crew they just 
for whatever reason. That because usually we're playing USC, we playing. It was home. usually their week to take a vacation. Right? It, was a, it was a it was a break. Their tra- it was a transition period. So the grass, you know, it grows a little longer during that time of year. No, no, it's no big deal. I know. Actually, we've actually had some people to tur- somebody tore up their knee because uh, their cleat got a USC guy uh, yeah. got their knee tore up because it got caught in the grass. I'm like, yeah, we might need to cut that. All right, second and eight at the 23. Notre Dame's driving. Here so comes the blitz. Comes, there goes the ball. <laughs> And, and to me, that's on Jarrett. He he has to see that double a gap blitz coming, and at the very least, change cadence. You know, not necessarily change the play, but at least change the cadence because you they timed it up too too well. That was beautifully timed. That had some some yeah. stone breaker to it. Marcus Steele, the USC player who made a terrific play on this blitz. Also, anyone that wears fifty five at USC <laughs> automatically becomes a great linebacker. <laughs> it, it, you know, some it's some of those numbers that just you have to be good if you're wearing it for a certain team. The number on certain teams, like you know, three was always the, yeah. the number. number name. If you're gonna be wearing number three, you you better be pretty good. So that gives USC the ball first and ten at their twenty-seven. Now remember, they burned a timeout to start the second half. Yeah. Well, that's good a great play. call. Yeah. No one, no one's picking up the fullback on that one. Even back then, that's a great. All right, call. now it's a first down. What happens, guys, when there's a first down? Clock stops. Van Rampoor's called a second time out there. Oh man, not a, not a, not a great move. There. Oh wow. So now they got one left. That was either a hold or the best block of all time at the right tackle. Yeah, he <laughs> that was a takedown. That was a full-on takedown. Ooh, ooh, Hayes does a nice job. They ruled him out of bounds. He had a good game for USC. So this is third and four at the 48 with 42 seconds left. They, they had a really good receiving core. I mean, very, very athletic, very fast, and they all caught the ball well. Incomplete again. Four guys, as I mentioned earlier in our live stream here, who ran the 100 yard dash in 10.34 or faster. All right. Fourth and four. Oh, yep. Anthony Weaver making the play, right? Yes, sir. Great job getting pressure. Number 98. Also all-time underrated. Great job getting pressure. Again, you know, getting it done when it counts. Like I said, for the majority of this game, our defense played well. You know, and I think, like I said, you know, just they continue to fight and get after again to start to get a little bit of pressure on the quarterback and – you know, and again, that rain definitely helped us. <laughs> no and doubt. And it's the game, the game that this senior class can hang their hat on. Not only is it USC, but this 21-point comeback was the largest for Notre Dame since the 1979 Cotton Bowl when they came from 22 down against Houston with Joe Montana. So the seniors finally beat USC in dramatic fashion. And you know, Notre Dame doesn't want to hang its hat on the USC game, but in those tough years, yeah. you hang your hat on the USC game. Yeah, you gotta hang, you gotta hang it where it, where, where you can get it. <laughs> Plus, these guys started; they were freshmen when they had finally lost USC in Holtz's last game. That's that's a hard way to start your career. So, getting a win over USC as seniors in a most frustrating year possible. No doubt. Well deserved celebration. Big name coaches for Notre Dame. Greg Madison was a defensive coordinator. Urban Meyer was an assistant coach on this Notre Dame team. And you can see the elation. A, a, a team that had been through so much heartbreak. And at this point, they think they've got it going. They would beat Navy. They had a bye week the following week. Uh, and then it went uh, the other way throughout the month of November. Yeah. Yeah, November was not, not, a, not a fun time for the Irish that, that year. So, Reggie, it's like old times. Every week I'm doing something with you. Hey, I'm loving this. You know, I just hate that we're doing have to do it in a pandemic. <laughs> yeah, nice because I keep, I keep saying that I'll buy you, I'll buy you a meal, and I have the great uh, excuse not to do it since uh, <laughs> exactly. we can't go uh, out. Average, you know. I, I think one of the things too that we're all blessed with is Notre Dame has so many fine outlets covering uh, its program with so many very talented, experienced guys like Tim. So, Tim, we really appreciate your lending 
your expertise to this. You were living in Atlanta. At, yeah. Uh, but uh, this was one of the four games you covered in person that season. I had fun coming up for, uh, I actually went to uh, Michigan, USC, Oklahoma, and Tennessee in one Notre Dame football season living in Atlanta. So that's a, I got a mixed bag of results, but you can't watch better programs than that. So certainly, folks, I am not in any way going to denigrate the resumes of our two guest analysts today, but we are working on a big, big name analyst for next week when we will look back at the 2018 Notre Dame victory over Michigan. That indeed was a sweet one. So yes. Reggie, Tim, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Folks at home, thanks so much for uh, tuning in, logging on. We hope that you are isolating in place safely. Uh, we hope we gave you something to smile about. Good night, everybody, and as always, go Irish. <laughs>